I am at Logitech and they have something really interesting here. It's eye tracking. So where does the driver focus his eyes? And you can see when he's driving that he's focusing on the left apex now. And now he's already uh, looking at the outside of the curve. So this is really interesting. You can really see where he is looking at. And these are those uh, eye tracking glasses, very expensive, 15,000 euros from a company that is uh, developing eye tracking so you can see eye tracking in many devices like VR or military company that is developing the eye tracking is called Toby and uh, this is the new uh, direct drive from Logitech and they are pedals and I'm going to try them out and I'm also going to try out this eye tracking which I think is really cool especially for racing development and uh, maybe even for learning uh, sim racing because uh, the race coach can see where you are looking at and maybe correct you and uh, yeah make your learning curve a bit faster and because this is really important where you are looking at i don't know anything about this wheel so what is the how many newton meters does it have 11 newton meters 11. uh outrunner direct drive motor okay similar to the podium there aren't too many outrunners a lot most systems are in fanatec dd2 fanatec did it as and well. dd1 they have a it's few so advantages good. they're kind of expensive but they have they make more they make more torque because the magnets are on the outside yeah and so forth. But they are also a bit heavier. They're heavy. They're and they expensive. have a higher rotational mass. A little bit, but it's, it's hard to tell because the yeah. rim has so much inertia and they're so yeah. torquey. But <clears throat> big outrunner motor, uh, 300 watt power supply. What else? Uh, hall sensor, typical brushless servo control, you know? Yeah. Um, and, then it's and you said uh, about the uh, wiring from the wheel. Oh, to yeah. the and internal clock spring so there's a ffc cable that goes through the axle of the motor and then in the back is the same system you have behind the wheel of your car yes it's wound up in a cassette around and around and around and it just kind of opens up and closes as yeah you, like a spring yeah. like a clock yeah like a watch spring so what is the price 1099 euro with the with the rim, with the rim. and the pedals and are extra pedal. 350. okay two year warranty i think two year warranty yeah. So in the price point, you are pretty similar to Fanatec, actually. Yeah, we're kind of we're kind of in between the CSL DD and the Podium, you know, torque in the in between, price in between, you know. Yeah. Um, but we did a lot of testing. The first prototypes were running two years ago, or, or maybe more. But then we just did a lot of reliability testing, 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 te testing that clock spring, millions of rotations. Thousands and thousands of hours of vibration testing. We just ran. Yeah. I've never, I never broke a unit in testing. We would run them and run them and run them and run them. Usually, what happens is eventually you get a little bit, of, a little bit of wobble in the quick release. Okay. Because it's you know ball bearings okay, and friend, stuff. Yeah. yeah, but you're talking like years and years and years of use. So we're pretty confident that it's. But the quicker release looks pretty similar to the Fanatec one. Look, they're all kind of they're all kind of working the same. You know, well, this it's the ball bearing style. There's yeah. also the, the kind of the tombstone, the trapezoid style. Yeah. There's the spline style. It's a typical ball bearing quick release. Yeah. But we chose. To but it's I think it's good design, but uh, the tolerances need to be really tight. Absolutely, they do. Yeah. So these are the glasses that are doing the eye tracking. Right. Can you just hold us out here and look at the dots okay. in the center? They are now calibrating the eye tracking. Yeah. So, yeah, you're going to have eight laps around round time. Okay. We're going to record your eye tracking data as well as MoTeC telemetry data. Okay. okay. I'm now trying out the wheels and... Uh, yeah, these glasses are recording my eye tracking data. And I can tell you something about how it feels. The brake, it's, it has a lot of travel and it's, uh, it feels springy. I think the pedal is uh, too springy for my taste and I can also it's, I have a feeling like I'm bottoming out when I'm braking. Uh, it's just like it reaches some kind of limiter. 
and I can press it any further, which is really weird. Yeah, it's like I cannot break all the way. I cannot even lock the wheels. This is all the way pressed in, and the wheel is uh, the force feedback. Good. I feel I can feel the curves. I can feel the weight of the car, uh, but I can also feel a lot of information in the wheel. Like it's probably sending me some unfiltered information, uh, high frequencies. Maybe somebody like this much high frequencies on the wheel, but I don't. I would like to filter that out. It doesn't feel very realistic. But is the force feedback strong enough? And if I could compare it to something, I don't know, maybe CSL DD from Fanatec. Let's try to crash a bit to see the power. Yeah. It is comparable, I would say, to Fanatec CSL DD. Maybe the closest thing, uh, considering the strength itself. Maybe it is a little bit more powerful, but I can't tell because maybe I didn't reach the full power yet. But I can feel the curves really nicely on the wheel. And uh, They, they're not going to get a lot of data from me because I'm more into testing this gear than into driving uh, on the track <laughs> so I'm driving chaotically right now the shifter feels nice on the wheel so if I would have to say something uh, to conclude this review uh, is this wheel good enough i would say yes it's definitely comparable to some of the best wheel out there like with the wheels for fanatex csl dd i would say this one is a bit stronger all that you need to feel is there i think with a little bit of tweaking you can get a lot but uh, unfortunately i'm not so much satisfied with the pedals uh, maybe something could be done with further setup maybe making them a bit harder i also heard that they have these rubbers that you can change so maybe with uh, some setuping i could make the pedals feel a bit more to my taste and a bit more realistic also these uh, high frequencies that i'm feeling in the wheel are i think they are called uh, true force and i think they can be removed in settings so if you like this you can leave it on if you don't like me you can uh, filter this out so uh, this shouldn't be a problem overall i think it's a good product they say they had a lot of testing so it should hang out there for a long time i think the quality should be there they are a serious company but considering the price i don't know it's up to you to decide i think uh, my opinion is that the price is pretty steep. They could have gone a bit lower with the price. They are competing with Fanatec, obviously. They are putting themselves somewhere between CSL DD and DD1. But I think uh, their price should be a bit lower if they really want to compete with the Fanatec. Because honestly, if I would compare this pedal that are costing $350, to Fanatec V3s that are similarly priced, it's just uncomparable. The Fanatec V3 are really destroying this pedal in every single manner. They are just better pedals overall. So that's that. I think the G25 is a legend of a wheel and uh, I never managed to broke a G25. But I must say the G27 is not that good of a wheel. It has these helical gears. But it uh, introduced another problem where the axle of the motor was going like 
like this you are. yeah and you then are. it was like drrr, drrr. Yeah. <laughs> we I, I just I just fixed that we, yeah. we, we, we for the G923 same problem they have bushings in the motors. Yeah. We, we put a front. Just we just put a front ball bearing. And that was so long time ago, and I, I knew it was like moving from G25. You could feel the gears, and then G27 was like, oh, this is so smooth. Yeah, yeah, this but is it great. Didn't knock. Yeah. And and then I and it was not so much pronounced at first because it was the wheel was new, but then yeah. it got even worse and worse and worse. Yeah. And then I had it on yep. warranty and very much known issue it's number the number one complaint of the g923 or whatever is that yeah. knocking sound yeah um, and then there's lash in the gears but that'll never go away so yeah. there's always a little chatter but that clunking sound will we've finally fixed it yeah i well yeah they said they said can you fix it i said put a ball bearing in that it'll go away so now of course it went away yeah simple fix yeah, yeah. simple things yeah. Yeah.